Welcome to the Pan American Properties video learning series. During this video, I will be demonstrating how quick and easy it is to enter prospect information into Rent Manager. You will also learn how to email the application packet to your prospects, how to use filters to find a previously entered prospect, and how to add additional activity details in the prospect screen. Owners, management companies, and the Fair Housing Department will conduct shops at your property. Make sure to treat every prospect equally and enter all prospects, even those who do not qualify or who just leave a phone message. Once you've launched the Rent Manager program, select the Prospect icon near the top. This will open up the Prospect screen. Select Add New Prospect. Then you'll need to choose your property from the drop-down menu and enter the information in the fields below. If the prospect did not provide their name, enter either male or female as the first name and then use the contact date for the last name. Make sure to enter contact information so that you can get back in touch with them. Next, use the drop down menu from the lead source to indicate how the prospect heard about the property. If it's a drive by or a walk in, that means that they saw the now leasing sign on the property and either called you or just walked in. You can also enter information into the contact comment screen that you see here. Then now select next. If they gave you a move in date, enter that information here. How the prospect originally contacted you is very important. Choose call, visit, or email and select the day and the time which that happened. You'll notice that there's a box here that says spoke with prospect and it's checked. Don't ever uncheck that box. You can enter information in the description screen as well. Click next. This screen is a user defined tab. You'll come back to this later once you've received the credit application from the prospect and run those reports. Click Next. Details in this screen are essential for qualifying the prospect. How many people will be residing in the unit? What size and type of unit do they want to move into? What's their budget? These are important answers to have on file. So let's put four and they don't want to pay any more than a thousand but they only want a one bedroom. That's going to be a problem. Currently we're not using the amenities section here so don't check these boxes. Go ahead and click next. Any available unit that matches the criteria that you entered in the previous screen will then be displayed on this screen. Go ahead and click Next. On this final screen, you're able to schedule an appointment and Rent Manager will remind you of that appointment. If you're all done, click Finish. You'll see in the left-hand column that the prospect you just entered is highlighted here. So let's go ahead and um, we'll send an email to this person. But first I want to point something out that's very important and that is you need to create only one prospect for each group of people who would reside together in the same unit. You can add those additional people by selecting the People tab and entering their details. Click Add and let's do um, Mark Arrow. 
and click Save. Now, of course, you'd enter additional information such as contact information, but for the sake of this training session, I'm not entering in all of the info that does need to be entered in. So now what we're going to do is um, find that application packet and get it emailed out. So go to that highlighted name, right click, scroll down to write letters, and go over to the drop down menu and choose the application packet. And let's just spend a couple of moments just reviewing the documents in the application packet. You have a receipt for your application and screening fee. You have the rental policy statement. There's the CoreLogic Safe Rent. Um, this talks all about the rental scoring. And then the next page is the rental application. Each adult must fill out a separate application. Make sure that you review these documents so that you can answer any questions the prospect has. Now to email this document, all you need to do is go down to the column, left-hand column. Right next to email, there's a button that says selected. Go ahead and click on that button. And then you're going to fill out the email dialog box. So you have the subject line should be the property. The attached as would be the application packet. Now when it comes to the message, what you're going to want to make sure is that you include a friendly message that's relevant to the communications that you've had with the prospects. Down towards the bottom, you'll see the name and then email. Now if you had entered an email address into the people screen, it would be displayed here. If it's blank, you can still enter the email into the field but it won't be created in the people screen. So that means that you're going to have to go and enter that manually. But for now, let's just go ahead and create that email address so that you can see what it looks like, an accessible emailing looks like. Just click send. If there was an error, you would see that right here. But in this case, the message was sent. So after you send the email, you'll need to close this dialog box and the document as well. When you close a document, Rent Manager is going to ask whether or not you want to save changes to the merged document. The answer is always no. We save a lot of documents into Rent Manager but those are signed documents that we save. Now it's important that you follow up with your prospects. If they contact you or when you try to contact them, you'll need to enter the details in the prospect activity tab. So that's what we're going to look at. As soon as I show you a different way that you can filter for your prospects. So as you notice here in the column, there could be a lot of people listed here. And it might be difficult for you to figure out who it was, especially when uh, they didn't give you a first name to begin with, who it is that you're trying to look for. So one way that you can filter is you click on filter. And then you're able to enter You'll select your property. If you know when they were created, so you have a good idea of when they were created, it could be the day or it could be even longer. It could be the last time that you had contact with them. Maybe it's even the move-in date that you entered in. There's a lot of different options that you have here. 
as well as having, um, you can enter their name if you know what their name is. So let's go ahead and select um, that the last name was Arrow. Oh, there he is. So what I wanted you to see was the primary prospect that you entered um, is the male, but because that other individual was added into the prospect screen, you can search for that person as well. And oftentimes you see that happening where um, the original person isn't who initiates the second contact, it's someone else. So it's really great that you can search that way. So what can you do in the activity tab? A lot. <laughs> you can add details of phone calls that you had. Clicking that box will launch um, for the call history. You can enter description and the result of that call. Um, you can add a visit. Same thing with the description and the result. They came by and viewed would be a description and the result is they took an application. Whatever um, details that are relevant. Um, the other thing is an email. If you sent an email, you can give a brief description of what that email was about and if you received a response as far as the results go. Make sure that you uh, properly indicate the day and the time in which that happened. And then of course you're going to have to click save. Also, there's one um, add note. That would be something um, if you wanted to remember certain details, um, you can go ahead and create a note with that. Um, there's a number of categories when you create notes. This one also has uh, prospect communications. So that's a really good one to use down here. So why do we enter all this information into the activity tab? It's important that we have a record of prospect communications. It's also really great because you don't have to remember things. You just have everything in the activities tab. So not only will you be able to see it, but your supervisor is going to be able to view it if they need to. At the top of the activities tab, you can also schedule an additional appointment or an appointment and RIP Manager is going to remind you. If you do use this feature, you need to remember that you still have to add a visit for when they come to the property. There is a user to find tab here, I mentioned this earlier so that once you um, complete the prospects credit screening, you'll need to enter the details here. So sometimes you need to click in a field so that you can um, see a date field. So you'll enter the date that the uh, credit screening was done, the amount of the credit check fee that was um, all people combined, and then how much they paid. Then there's a couple of other tabs here the transaction and the uh, payment screen. Now you'll not need to enter anything in either one of those screens, but I wanted to make sure to point them out in case you wondered. Lastly, um, on the unit preference screen, you can see that there's a field here that says reserved unit. Do not reserve a unit in the unit preference tab. Units are assigned once the prospect is paying a holding deposit, and that process happens in the customer screen. This concludes the training session, Entering Prospects into Rent Manager. I hope you found it to be informative and helpful. If you have any questions, email answers at papink.com. Thanks for watching.